Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now one of the most important core designs for 2016 and beyond is the Cortex A72. And it's the core that's used inside the new Kirin 950 system on a chip. So today I'm gonna to be looking at the performance of the Cortex A72 and the Mali T880 GPU that are inside the Kirin 950. So if you're ready, let's go. So ARM announced the Cortex A72 back in 2015, and this design has three main goals. First of all, they wanted to bump the performance up to the next generation of 64-bit computing. Second, they wanted to decrease the power usage, increase the efficiency of the processor. And thirdly, they wanted to shrink its physical size on the die, which of course helps manufacturing costs as well as several other things. And now we have the Kirin 950, a processor built by High Silicon, which is a subsidiary of Huawei, and we find it inside the Mate 8. Now the Kirin 950 is an octa-core processor. It uses four Cortex A53 cores. Now we're used to the Cortex A53. We've seen them in lots of phones last year. But instead of Cortex A57 cores, we now have Cortex A72 cores. So there are four Cortex A72 cores running at 2.3 gigahertz. And then accompanying the CPU is the Mali T880 GPU. Now I've taken the Mate 8 and I've run lots of different benchmarks on it, including some of the popular ones from the Play Store, including Antutu and 3 d Mark, and so on. And I've also used three of my own in-house developed benchmarks, which I wrote myself, that can, we can double check that the scores we're seeing on the external benchmarks are true to form. So if you're ready, let's start to look at some of these results. Of course, the first test I ran was AN22. Now I'm using AN22 version 6, which has changed a little bit from the previous version. The numbers have changed, how it does the calculations are a bit different. However, this particular device scored 91,087. Now that's the highest score I've ever seen from AN22. Now, of course, we need some context. What does that mean? Where are other phones? So I've also ran these tests on the uh, Galaxy Note 5 and the Sony Z5 Compact. So the Galaxy Note 5 has, of course, the Exynos 7 processor in it, and of course, the Sony has the Snapdragon 810. So that will give us an idea of where the, how the performance has increased with this next generation of CPU. So the scores for the Exynos 7420 in and 22 version 6 were 77,989, and for the Sony it was 76,497. So obviously the 91,087 of the Kirin 950 in the Mate 8 is quite a significant jump. The next test I ran was CPU Prime Benchmark. And as you can guess from the name, this program calculates prime numbers, lots and lots of them, and sees how long it takes and then gives out a score. So the Kirin 950 scored 31,108, compared to 22,862 from the Note 5, and 20,771 from the Snapdragon 810 inside of the Sony Z5 Compaq. And of course, no CPU benchmarking would be complete without running Geekbench. Now Geekbench gives us two scores, one which is the single core score, which tells us how fast just a single core runs. Doesn't matter whether it's an eight core or a quad core or a 10 core processor, how fast is one individual core? And of course, then there is the multi-core score, which tries to run all of the cores at the same time to see what scores it can achieve. So let's have a look at those results. For the single core test, the Kirin 950 scored 1,772, and that compares to 1,504 and 1,385 by the Exynos and the Snapdragon, respectively. So obviously, that's quite a significant increase in CPU performance. And for the multi-core, we have 6,089 by the Kirin 950, 5,258 by the Exynos 7, and 4,295 by the Snapdragon uh, 810. So again, now we see the uh, multi-core score go up over 6,000. So clearly the CPU in the Kirin 950 is far faster than the CPU in the Snapdragon 810 and in the uh, Exynos 7420. Before we go on to look at the GPU scores, I just want to remind you that all these numbers can be found over at the AndroidAuthority.com website. There's a written companion that goes along with this video, and there you'll see various tables and charts where you can see all the different scores for all the different benchmarks that I've run against the Mate 8. So now let's look at the GPU. First of all, Epic Citadel. The Mate 8 is able to run Epic Citadel in ultra high quality mode at 59 frames per second. Well, that's near perfection if we're talking about 60 frames per second being the maximum speed that these displays can handle. 
and that compares to 49.2 frames per second that's on the Note 5 and 58.5 frames per second that's on the Compact Z5. Of course, we must remember that the screen resolutions are different across all three phones. For example, the Mate 8 is a full HD, the resolution on the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 is much, much greater, and of course it's much, much lower on the Sony Z5 Compact, it's just 720p. I then ran 3D Mark. First of all, I ran the Slingshot demo, and the scores are quite interesting. The Huawei Mate 8 scored 923, which actually is worse than the Note 5, which scored 1,278, and worse than the Snapdragon 810, which scored 1,168. So certainly it looks here as if there is some performance issues with the GPU in the Kirin 950. Is it software? Is it a bad implementation? I don't know at this moment. However, I was expecting slightly higher scores than this. So I, then I ran the, uh, another test inside 3D Mark, this time the Ice Storm Extreme, which also includes some off-screen rendering, which hopefully levels the playing field when it comes to the different screen resolutions. So let's have a look at those results. The Huawei Mate S scored 1,926, and again, that's slower, lower than the Note 5, which scored 25,073, and the Snapdragon 810 in the Z5 Compact, which scored 27,160. So again, out of those three phones, the GPU part of the Kirin 950 seems to be a little on the weak side. And don't get me wrong, it's still a very, very good score. It's still a very, very powerful implementation of this Mali T880 GPU. However, I was expecting higher scores. Benchmarks are great. However, something closer to real life may be more interesting. Now, normally we would run some tests for maybe game startup times, for multitasking and so on. However, there are other things that affect those uh, results, including the speed of the flash memory and how much RAM there is inside of the device. Now, I'm not testing the Mate 8 specifically. I'm trying to get at the speed of its system on a chip. So therefore, I've decided to run a couple of JavaScript tests. Now, JavaScript is important, of course, because it's the engine that's in the web browser, and in all our web browsing activities, we're always using JavaScript. So in real day use, we're always seeing how fast this JavaScript is and how it affects our web browsing experience. Now, there are two benchmarks, one by Mozilla, which is called Kraken, one by Google, which is called Octane, and I ran both of them to see what performance I get out of this particular system on a chip. I'm using Chrome from the Play Store across all three devices, the same version of Chrome. So hopefully this will give us a good idea about some real world performance numbers. So here they are. With Kraken, the lower the score, the better. And the Kirin 950 scores 3,524, which compares to the 3,753 of the Exynos 7 and the 4,253 of the Snapdragon 810. Now with Google Octane, it is the higher scores are better, and the Kirin 950 scores 10,868, while the Exynos 7 scores 9,174, and the Snapdragon 810 9,100. So we can see again when it comes back to CPU usage that clearly the Cortex A72 inside of the Kirin 950 is a really, really good CPU. As I said earlier, I've written my own in-house benchmarks so that I can verify the results that we're getting from these external benchmarks. And I've got three benchmarks. The first one just does some calculations. It calculates primes, it does some hashings, it does some bubble sorts, and then it gives me a number which tells me how long it took to run all those tests. So the lower the number, the better the score. I then have a 3D water simulation test, which puts in drops of water into a bucket. There's some physics motion calculations that need to go on. And basically one drop of water is put in every frame. Now at 60 frames per second, the maximum number of water droplets that can go in is 5,400. And we'll have to see what the results are, but I think you'll be quite surprised. And then I've also got a 3D benchmark that I wrote in Unity 3D. It flies around a landscape and then tells me how many frames a second it scored. So let's have a look at my results. So for the hashes, bubble sorts and prime numbers, the Kirin 950 scored 19,074. Really, really low compared to the Exynos 7, which scored 30,370, and the Snapdragon 810, which scored 22,937. So according to my benchmarks, again, the Cortex A72 is an absolutely fantastic CPU core design. Now, moving on to the water simulation, as I said before, 5,400 is the maximum score you can get. Now, I'll tell you the scores, first of all, for the Note 5 and for the uh, Z5 Compact. The Note 5 scored 5,349 and the Z5 Compact scored 5,222. 
So as you can see, the Note 5 was almost there. It's about 51 frames that it dropped in the whole series of that test. Now here's the amazing news. The Huawei Mate S, the Kirin 950 and the Huawei Mate S scored a perfect score of 5,400. It dropped no frames during my water simulation. Now that's absolutely brilliant, but it also means I've got to write a new benchmark now because this one is not gonna be any good this year because all the phones are probably going to break that 5,400 barrier. So watch this space for the next iteration of my benchmark. Now finally, I use my Unity 3D benchmark that I wrote and that gives me frames per second. So here are the results. The Huawei Mate S managed to do 3,543 total frames during the simulation, which gave us a frame rate of 22.83 frames per second. Now the uh, Note 5 scored 3,432 total frames during the exercise, which was a frame rate of 21.48 frames per second. And then the Z5 Compact had 4,800 total frames and a FPS of 42.22. And as we can see, the Sony Z5 Combat had the best score in this test, and that's mainly due to its 720p display. And although the Mate 8 actually ran faster than the Note 5 in this particular test, we've got to remember that the Mate 8 has a full HD display, whereas the display on the Note 5 is much, much greater. And I'm sure if they both had the same displays, we would find that the Kirin 950 was actually underperforming when compared to the Exynos 7420. And so what does all this mean? Well, basically, the Cortex-A72 is basically the fastest core design that I have seen in an Android phone so far. Now, of course, there's lots of competition coming down the pipeline. We've got the Snapdragon 820. We've got the new processors from Samsung. So we're going to have to see how this chip compares with some of the others later on in the year when they become available. However, today, this is the fastest CPU that I have seen on an Android device. Also, the Mali 880 GPU doesn't seem to be performing quite as well in the Kirin 950. That might need some further investigation. However, it's still a very powerful GPU. Well, my name's Gary Sims from Android Authority, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please use the comments below to tell me what you think about the Cortex A72 design. What do you think about the Kirin 950? What do you think about the Huawei Mate S? I'd be really interested to hear your opinions. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. And as for me, I'm going to see you in my next video. You might think making videos is easy. Well, you know about the old red lorry, yellow lorry, red lorry, yellow lorry. Well, try saying Cortex A53, Cortex A72, Cortex A53, Cortex A72, Cortex A53, Cortex A72, Cortex A57, Cortex A53, Cortex A72. It's not that easy, you know.